Today we're making brown sugar layer cake with cranberry buttercream. The first thing we had to do was get groceries from our favorite grocery store, Trader Joe's. We couldn't find cranberries at Trader Joe's, so we're using raspberries instead. We picked up some butter, some oil, some buttermilk, and cake flour. Cake flour is a little less dense than normal flour, so that should result us with a lighter cake. Now we can start baking. We're using a scale here so that we can be a bit more accurate with our ingredients. We first add the cake flour, then we add the baking powder, some baking soda, and we sift it all together so we don't get any clumps. Now in a separate bowl, we add buttermilk, we add brown sugar. This brown sugar has been sitting for a while so it all got clumped up. I had to manually sift this for a few minutes it was kind of a pain, but I didn't want to pay for more brown sugar. Now we add some white sugar and we add the butter. This butter has been sitting at room temperature for a while. You want the butter to be at room temperature because if it's too cold, then it's really hard to whisk together with the sugar. Next, we add some oil, some salt, then you whisk it all together using either a hand mixer or a stand mixer. I'm using a hand mixer here because I don't have a stand mixer and I really like the hand mixer because once you're done with it, you can just put it away in the cupboard and you don't have to take up any counter space. After mixing for a few minutes, it's time to incorporate the eggs. The recipe calls for three egg whites, so I'm separating out three eggs one by one and incorporating the egg whites slowly to the batter. After incorporating the egg whites into the batter, it's time to mix the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients together. We're going to do this in three separate batches so that there's no clumps, and I'm using a spatula instead of an electric mixer. If you use a hand mixer, or if you whisk too much of the flour with the wet ingredients, it can activate the flour and make the dough really, really bready and dense, but that's not what we want. We want a light, fluffy cake. So now I'm buttering and flouring the pan so that the cake doesn't stick to the pan. I'm buttering two of them because I'm going to make a two layer cake. The purple strips you see around the baking pan, I love these things. These things are baking strips and they're essentially just strips that you soak in water and you wrap around the baking pan and that way the cake doesn't overcook on the sides or on the bottom. So it comes out nice and even and perfect. Now we just pour the batter into both pans evenly. a little tippy-tappy, and in it goes into a 350 degree oven for around 25 minutes. Now the cake is cooking, let's get started with the raspberry jam. So the recipe for the jam is pretty simple. It's just a bunch of raspberries, sugar, and a bit of water. We add some ginger for a little bit of spice and we just cook it down until it becomes a syrupy texture. I actually put this through a blender, but I forgot to film that. So here it is after being put in a blender and cooked down for another 30 minutes. Now it's time to make Swiss meringue buttercream. This is my first time making Swiss meringue buttercream, and I have to say it's a bit tricky. The recipe calls for egg whites and sugar. You take the egg whites and sugar over a boiling pot of water, and you whisk them until the sugar fully dissolves into the egg whites. Once that's done, you put it into another bowl, and you use either a hand mixer or an electric stand mixer, and you whisk it until you get this nice meringue texture. Once you get something like this, then you start adding the butter one tablespoon at a time. It's great having someone help out, especially as you add one tablespoon of butter at a time. Holding the hand mixer and adding the butter at the same time is quite challenging, I must say. Here we add some of the raspberry jam that we made earlier and becomes this nice, beautiful pink color. This is gonna be the base frosting for our cake decorating. I think it's time for our cakes to come out. Just look at that cake. It's absolutely perfect. I love these strips because they prevent the crust from forming on the outside of the cake. And so you get this nice soft texture around the entire cake instead of a muffin-like texture. 
we wait a bit for our cakes to cool and then we can start decorating. Now we add the buttercream into the piping bag and we can start decorating our cake. We add one layer of raspberry jam at the bottom. Then we add a layer of buttercream on top of the jam. We then smooth it out a little bit. It doesn't matter too much because this is in the middle. And we add another layer of jam. We should have used a bit more jam in the cake here because we still have a lot of leftover jam in the fridge and we have no idea how we're going to finish it all. Now it's time to decorate the outside of the cake. We use a piping bag and a cake spinner at the bottom to create a nice even layer across the top and along the sides. Once we pipe around the entire cake, we can use an offset spatula to even out the frosting along the cake. I love doing this, this is so satisfying. We had also just purchased this new cake spinner. We were using a cheap plastic one before, but using a metal one is much, much smoother. And now for our decorations, we decided to keep it simple and just use some raspberries along the outside. We thought this was a really simple design, but it turned out really, really nice. Here are some photos. We baked this cake for our friend's birthday and we brought it over to his birthday party. Happy We had a ton of fun baking this cake and we love sharing it with our friends. See you next time!